Howdy train fans, welcome back to the Chattanooga Southern Railroad. So, if you uh, remember, I bought a, a number of the RCR kits from uh, off of eBay, and this is one of them. I showed the, these to you in a previous video, um, and I've already built one of them and wanted to uh, build another one in front of you and let you know what I've learned about them. Overall, I give the car a fantastic score. Um, this car cost me, I think it was $6.25 uh, plus shipping for it. And if you buy multiples from him, he combines shipping to make it um, even more uh, affordable. Uh, in addition to the car itself, I bought some of the his overstock from the old Roundhouse Products box. This is a brand new box. So, and what I've done is I've already done a couple of the steps that I would normally do with these cars. So I have KDs on them because they don't come with couplers. Uh, and I have already tuned and put in metal truck wheels, uh, all metal wheels, because the ones that come with it are plastic, just so you're aware of that too. Um, I went ahead and um, tested it against my height gauges. As you can see there, they match quite nicely on both ends. Uh, I did have to adjust with my KD adjusting tool, um, both couplers to make sure that they cleared the bottom plate down here. But overall, I have to give it, this car a, a really uh, great score. Things I don't like about the car is the brake wheels. Um, you have to put a dab of glue in there. Now this is a, um, a spare one that I have. It is a pressure fit. It will stay in there, but the ones that come with it, uh, which you can see on this sprue here, the brown one, um, and I will get to that when I do this car, um, I replaced it with that one. And I'll show you that. The other thing, not too crazy about the roof walk. Um, some of the pins are quite tight and they will, some, these three snapped into place. This one's a little loose, so you can see that there's, if I can get that in the screen, a little bit of waviness in it. Um, but, you know, a little dab of glue, if you were to hold this down and glue it from the back side, I think that would be fine. I still have to weight this car, so I'm going to do that when I uh, do the weighting for it. But, overall, um, oh, and the other thing too is, um, regarding uh, tuning these trucks, I put the the uh, Micromark tool in there, and they were really, really good. Like, it took very little uh, uh, shavings out of it. And I mean, when I say little, I'm talking about maybe one or two at the most, and it was only on one side. Um, so if you're not into tuning your trucks up, feel confident that you could put metal wheels in this, and it would be, for the most part, 90% fine. Okay, so with that said, I'm going to open up my brand new little box here, put my oops, new car away since, and we'll, we'll do some other work on it later on. I'm also going to put my little test track back here to the back, and I'm going to bring out what you get in the box, in the kit when you get it. Okay, a lot of this stuff is in plastic bags as you've seen before like the body was in this plastic bag this was this was in its own separate bag this was in its own separate bag uh, you'll see that you get the screws for not only the coupler boxes but also the trucks themselves and these are self-tapping uh, these two bigger ones uh, in addition to that you get your two weights which are what I call half weights there and you get your um, truck frames, which are plastic. So there'll be two of those. And then you get, again, you get these four wheels. Um, these are uh, plastic based with metal shafts. They would probably be fine for most of you. Um, again, I'm not gonna use those because I prefer metal wheels. So I'm gonna set those off to the side into my stash. Um, and now I'm gonna pull out a couple of my um, metal wheel sets that I have. So I'm going to need four of those. 
as you can see there. And again, these, I'll close the box so you can see. So these are the Walther's Proto wheels. These are 33 inch wheel sets. I bought a hundred pack of them. Um, I'll hold that there so you can get the SKU information from it. Okay. And I got those off of Amazon. All right. So let's go ahead and get started doing this. So the tools I'm going to have handy again for what I do is my Micromark uh, truck uh, tuning tool. I have my KD specialty pliers. Again, you can use, and I demonstrated this on a previous video, uh, you can use regular needle nose pliers. You just have to be a lot more careful. Um, but I use these to tune my um, KDs. You're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver. You're also going to need a small flat blade screwdriver. You're going to need an X-Acto knife with uh, a nice sharp nine, uh, number 11 blade. I use sprue cutters to remove things from the sprues. It makes it a lot easier. And then I picked up a package of these uh, Tweezerman uh, emery boards um, that I use to uh, fine tune once I cut the sprues loose. Okay. So... And then, of course, I've got with me uh, my stack of, I have a, <laughs> as you can see, a plethora of the KD5s, um, uh, not the whisker type uh, couplers here, so I'll be digging these out. Actually, I probably ought to do that now. All right, so I've got, uh, let's see if I can find some that still have the springs in them, so we'll go ahead and throw these down. So we have them, so I'm going to need one of those, one of those, oops, not the box. Um, let's see if I can get one out of here. My fat fingers are not cooperating at all to find what it is I need. There we go. There's another spring. And then I need one last coupler. And there we go. All right. So we're set there. Um, and as I mentioned before, I've got this little thing of all kinds of things like old brake wheels and stuff like that. I'm going to pull this one out because I know it's going to work on that as opposed to the old ones. And I'll show you why that. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So let's set this back over here. Let's go ahead and cut some things from the sprue. So the bottom frame comes with the coupler boxes. And these are actually the weight attachers, which I think is a really neat design here. So... Let's go ahead, we're gonna cut that loose. We'll cut this one loose. And I always use the flat blade against the piece that I want to keep, right? Like so, we'll drop that down. And then we'll do this one as well, like so. Take a feel there, eh, a little bit. I did find out that if you don't sand these down, it does make um, putting, putting these um, into the uh, box, this box, not that box, uh, a little harder. So I just knock it down a little bit. So we've got that and I set this uh, flat for the moment. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut our weight uh, holders apart. Like so, and I'm gonna get, I don't know if you can see that against the green here, but there's a sprue here, sprue here. There's a whole bunch of them all the way around it. So I just go ahead and go on around it. These don't need to be cleaned up like other parts do. So that's your preference as to how OCD you want to take this. And there we go. Now we got those two parts done. All right. Clean off my little debris here. Um, next thing I'm going to do is cut these sprues uh pieces off the shards all four sides for that one so there's one coupler box cover um and a nice thing about this kit is that it does have the screw holding the coupler boxes as opposed to like the old atherm blue box um, so that's a nice improvement so we'll put that there all right so first thing i would recommend that you do is flip this back over and attach your weights and this couldn't be simpler so you put this over here you grab one of your rings and i would recommend having done this before that you make sure i don't know if you can see that in the picture but there's a molding mark on the top 
have those to the top side because that surface on the other side is completely flat and you'll get a tight fit. So you're gonna put it over top of this hole, right? Let's see if we can show you that. Over top and align it and then kind of work it until it snaps. And what I would recommend that you do, having done one already, is that you grab this from both sides of your thumbs and really push it down tight. That way this weight won't flip flop and swing back and forth, okay? Do this on the other side here. Take this sprue, or sorry, this uh, weight holder, and you can pop it on kind of like that, but you can see that this swings a little bit. Again, grab it from both sides, push it home, right? And now it doesn't move quite as easily, okay? So that's the initial weighting, right? If you don't weight your cars to NMRA standard, you're done with regards to that, okay? You can always come back and add more which I will be doing um, before I run these on my layout. Because one of the things I've decided to do is that a car will not make it up to my layout unless it's had all its tuning, um, couplers, and uh, wheels uh, done. So, okay. Now, on to what we're gonna do next. Because these bolsters with the wheels will kind of cover this area, we're gonna do the coupler boxes first. I'm going to set that down so we've got our uh, coupler boxes here, cu coupler box covers here, right? And so, again, what I do is I take my, I've got a little bit of sprue there. I'm just going to run it back and forth on that side, and I'm just going to do the other side. I'll take this one, and then I'll go do this side, and there we are, okay? set that off to the side so now for me again i'm using number fives if you have the whisker hair couplers you don't have to do this step of adding the spring but the spring drops very nicely into that box so the tolerances are perfect on it put the number five in that box like so Ooh, got a little bit of a problem i don't know if you saw that but there's a little sprue there I'm going to get that off there, give it a little bit of a zip, and come back in, okay? I did not have that on the other one. All right, so now um, I would recommend that you put the flat side down so you get a nice tight bond to it. The other side does have um, uh, the molding marks. The other thing I would recommend that you do is, um, let me open up the sprues because we're going to obviously need those, and these are well stapled. <laughs> uh, I think, uh, wow, I'm going to drop them onto my phone here if I can. There we go. Throw that away into the throw pile. So we're going to be using these two small screws here, like this. So these are the flat heads. All right. Um, I take that back. Uh, going back, you're not going to need a Phillips for this. I forgot. I was putting these together, and those need a Phillips. So we'll set that. Uh, we'll actually put that back in my tool pile here. All right. Now that we've got that on there, again, we're going to molding side up. I tend to like to drop the screw down through the plate first. One, because I got fat fingers but I just find it easier to, to hit that hole that way. So I'm gonna put my tool on top, my screwdriver, and I'm gonna start driving these down. And they, because they are self-tapping, they will cut the threads for you. As you're doing this, take it down until it seats. And you can't, if you gotta force it, you will strip them, okay? So there we go. Test it, it returns to center like it should. We're good to go. Now off to the other side. So again, I'm using number fives. I'm gonna throw the brass spring, or copper spring or whatever you wanna call that in there. I'm gonna get my coupler box cover. Um, I'm gonna put my, whoop, might wanna install the coupler, huh? All right, so we're gonna install the coupler in there. It holds it nicely. 
we're going to add a coupler box, center it over the hole, engage it with our screwdriver, let it cut the threads until it bottoms out. Hopefully you're seeing this. I'm going to take this down to there. Okay, give it a test. It returns to center. Um, one thing I will tell you doing these kits, if you've got one of these mats that's reversible, that has like the black color on one side and the green on the other, do the green side. It makes it easier to see these parts since they're, they're of the black color, okay? So now we've got our frame weighted like that. We're gonna set that back aside. Now we're gonna work on the, the, the um, trucks, okay? Again, you don't have to do this step I'm gonna do show you right now okay i do it just as um as a normal part of my routine because i don't want to go back and do this again you can go ahead if you want to and install these uh wheel sets that come with the kit in here and mount them um, that's up to you i choose not to so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my uh, tool and if you haven't seen this tool before it's got a cutting edge on one side of it and you actually I don't know if you can pick that up on the screen but there's actually some debris left from what I was doing okay, and the static electricity <laughs> tends to keep it there so in order to tune one of these trucks you insert this tool just like you would at any other um, wheel okay and then what I like to do is hold the the frame down by the tool and let it roll because it's got this little rubber wheel on it. Run it back and forth a couple times, pull it out, turn it around because the cutting wheel's only on one side. Do that side and then turn it around again. You can see I got a little shaving there from that. Put the tool back in. But overall, it's very smooth. I mean, it, it is barely cutting, if anything, in there. Turn it around, hold it, do it again. I just cleared off those. So now I've done that one truck, so I'm gonna set it over here. I'm gonna do this one, so my cutting edge is on that side. Got it in there, wheel it back and forth, open it back up, flip it around. Put it back in, do that. Cutting edge to the upside. I always like to do it when I'm putting it in for the first time on, on the side. I always do the cutting edge up. That way I remember my orientation or what step I'm on. Because you got to do this four times for every truck. And you can kind of see some of the debris there. I'll clean that off. This one's getting a little more debris than um, than that first car did. I'm, I'm surprised. And you can see there's some debris on there. Okay, so both of these couplers are now done. Or couplers, sorry, trucks are now done. So now I'm gonna take my proto wheels, and I'll pop it in there. This is really easy. There is a tool to help you with this um, if you need it. I actually have one, but you know, if you're only doing one or two cars, it's not that big a deal. If you're doing 20 or 30 of these cars doing this, your fingers will get sore squeezing these uh, to try to get these in here. So I would recommend you purchase one of those. Okay? So one of the things I like to do is turn it, turn the truck in the right orientation, spin it up and listen, and you will hear those things roll for quite a while, like it just stopped. So we're good to go there. All right, so now we're gonna take our frame, set it down. We're gonna take one of our, another self-tapping screw. We're gonna put it in the uh, the bolster hole. Um, I'm gonna and make sure you got these oriented the right way, right? The, the screw should disappear into the hole, not on top there, okay? Drop this down to the hole, put our screw in. I'm sorry if my arms or fat fingers are in the way here. 
Also, my lighting is not the best. And I will take this down. And with these screws, these are beautiful because you can see, unlike the, Ath the old Athern ones, that is like really seriously locked in place. So as I mentioned in one of my previous videos, I like to take it all the way down and then back it off like a quarter turn or so, depending, I just kind of get a feel. I just want it loose like that. I don't know if you guys can see that, loose like that. I don't use the three point method, okay? That some of you have uh, noted um, in past videos. And the reason I don't do that is because I am a stickler for my track work. I make sure that my track work is uh, dead set right, having been a track design engineer. Um, everything is makes or breaks on the track. So I'm putting in the second coupler. I don't know why my dexterity has gone to pot right now, but it has. Maybe it's the way I'm holding the screwdriver. <clears throat> anyway, gonna drive this one home. Until it seats, I'm gonna back it off until I have the looseness that I want. So what I'm looking for is to be able to turn those. This one might be a little too tight. Back it off just a smidge. There we go. I don't want rocking um, on the frame at all, okay? All right, so now we've got our couplers, we've got our trucks tuned, and I've got metal wheels in there. So we're gonna set that puppy down. Time to move on to uh, finishing off the boxcar itself, okay? So two things are on this sprue. Why we have extra coupler boxes, I don't know. I just break these off and put them in my parts bin for later. Um, one, and here, let me show you. Um, so there's two, two other things on this. Here's the roof walk here, and then the two wheels. Now, I don't know if you can see that well or not, but they are not the best molded uh, brake wheels. Um, the, some of the holes are still filled there. Um, and um, you really have to kind of cut it off. Like this one, this one I have to say is better than the last one. So if you want to pull these off, that might be a better view to see what holes are filled. The detail isn't there. So I'm not gonna use these. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, cut them off of this sprue and then I'm just gonna put them into my um, collection. And, the, and this would be, you know, if I've got a, for my scrap yard or something like that, um, I may use them. But I've got so many of the backup, oops. Um, I've got so many of the backups uh, from older cars that, you know, have, you know, if you, if you bought the blue boxes as a kid, you sometimes got spares. Like I cut that away from the sprue and you can kind of see how it kind of buggered it up, right? So if you got extra brake wheels, I would recommend you do that. Um, the other thing that I found with this too, and I'm gonna use the, this one, the, you can see that that stem is not that thick there, okay? If you look at this Athern one, it's a good bit thicker there. And so if I try to put this in the end of this, and it goes in, I mean, it's, whoops, uh-oh. That almost went down the rabbit hole. Um, if you put it in, right, okay, it'll go in, but it falls right back out again. So I don't use those. So here's the, the old Athern roundhouse ones. I'm gonna put it in there, nice snug fit it doesn't come off. And granted it's black, and if that bothers you, you can you can paint it um, at your leisure. But I'm not gonna do that. So next thing we need to do is we need to do, uh, get this roof walk off of here. The space between here is too narrow for these sprue cutters. So what I recommend you do is turn it face down and use your X-Acto blade, cutting as close to the roof walk as you can and cut it away. There's not a lot of material there, so it's gonna pop off pretty quickly, like so, okay? There's some junk for the scrap pile. Okay, we're gonna double check those. 
did a nice job. Eh, didn't do quite as good a job on that one. Let's just do a quick, quick scan there, quick scan there. Okay. Now let's look at. So we've got four tangs there. We're gonna put them, put them in. I recommend you get them started. Don't send them home right from the start. You want to make sure they they go in the hole. And then you heard that pop, right? And that one. And again, there's always the one by the brake wheel tends to not want to pop in. And you can see, hopefully, you know, that one did a little bit better than the other one. It actually went home. Um, if, again, if you've got one that's, you know, kind of stubborn or loose, uh, you can always come back in from the back side here and push down, put a little quick of, uh, dab of CA there and fix that. All right. We're almost done, folks. So now what I like to do is turn the box over, take my frame, and I like to get it started. Now you are going to have to use fingers to spread this a little bit, get it get it started in there. But once it once it starts, it's going to uh, come right on home, just that quick. All right, and it's now seated. All right, we're going to set this back off to the side here. I'm going to bring out our track, our test track. Get some of our other tools out of the way here. I'm going to set it down on our thing, on our test track. We're going to come up over to our KD. Perfect height. The only problem is, I don't know if you can see this or not, um, but this pin is not clearing that bottom plate in its relaxed state. I can lift it up just a smidge to get it up in there so it connects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my KD adjusting tool. If you haven't seen this, it's got this U-shaped side on this side and a pin of different sizes depending on what scale you're using. If you want to bend the pin up, you want the curved side to the outside. Okay, so what I will do is I will come in here like so, grab it, give it a little bit of a bend, and you see it moved it, the pin just a smidge. You don't have to do much. What you're basically trying to do is get that pin parallel. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. This one looks like it's in pretty good shape. So we're going to call that one, we're going to call that one good. But we'll test it nonetheless. And it works on that side. And it works on that side. And it is at the right scale height. So there you go, folks. Uh, one of the RCR, uh, River City Railroad uh, car kits that have KDs, because they don't come with couplers, with... Um, tuned and metal proto 2000 or metal proto wheels 33 inch wheels on there uh, fully assembled i did replace the brake wheel as i showed you uh, with one of my old stock athern roundhouse uh, ones but overall a really nice car for the money again this car cost me i think it was six and a quarter plus shipping um, and i did get extra boxes so um, and the other thing that you'll notice too uh, is he does, or they, I should say, because I can't say that it is a guy uh, for sure, is that they do offer multiple road numbers. So this is 15126 is the first one I built. This is 15130. So we'll put them back on the track. Like so couple up nicely and there you go so thanks for watching and we'll see you all down the tracks